there's this misconception about Downeyville that there's only a couple trails. And it's like, you have no idea. You're just standing on top of the iceberg. There's trails everywhere in these hills. People were riding the Downeyville downhill like everyone else is, and it's super good, I can't blame them. But they're missing a lot of what else is good. There's so many trails. It opens it up to where people can ride right from town and just going out and experiencing the more remote trails and the best trails that Downeyville has to offer. Greg Williams was a Nevada City teenager who was riding out here and he decided, you know what, these trails are legit enough to bring other people out. Traditionally, the jobs came from logging and mining, so resource extraction, that's why people are here. But now those jobs are gone. You get kind of lonely and it's like, shit, man, how do you like create some jobs so you can have people you want to be around living up here? This is kind of the mothership here, you have expeditions. My lifetime of work. The space sees about 15,000 visitors a year. Around 8,000 people like hopping on shuttles, demoing bikes, having good times. We're up in Old Valley Rim. It's pretty epic. We're gonna drop down in through Gold Valley, up to Four Hills Mine, and then to Lavazola, back to Downeyville. It's definitely a big day and it takes a little more effort to get out to. On an e-bike, you have this technical up that is something I didn't think I'd really enjoy until I started riding one of these. On a regular bike, this is a big thing. Maybe if I'm really angry at myself, I'll bust this out on a regular mountain bike. But doing this on an e-bike is not a big commitment anymore. We weren't out there much longer than anyone else. We just went way, way further. Greg's really good at getting us to think big. He calls them moonshots, right? What's your ultimate vision of what you would like to see? And we'll just one day at a time, like, you know, chip away at that dream and, and see if we can make it. This is like the next 10 years of my existence here on Mother Earth. Connected communities. What started as a concept is turned into a reality with the idea of being able to connect these severely disadvantaged communities through trail construction, trail maintenance, and then for the town through the service industry. So people will come into the towns patronize the local businesses, stay overnight. So it's a big uh, economic development project with trails as the, as the tool. Kurt's our trail whisperer, we call him. He's really into old maps that uh, showed during the gold rush, all these old mines and how to get to them. He's really been studying up to go out and, and reclaim some of those old routes. I've always loved trails. I've always loved working on trails and riding them. When the stewardship was formed, it was the year that Greg and his wife Heather had their first child. And it was the only year that we didn't do the Downeyville Classic. Every year, Santa Cruz Bicycles would give money to Greg to put on the Downeyville Classic. And so that year, Santa Cruz was like, hey, you're not doing the race, that's fine. We're going to still give you the money. And Greg took that money and put it into forming the Sierra Buttes Trail Stewardship. To date, we've built like somewhere around 100 miles of new single track. We probably maintain close to 1,000 miles of existing trail. Our trail builders, like the majority of them, I've known since they were six and seven years old. Like Henry, who's our trail boss, I hired him to swat flies in my shop for five cents a fly when he was uh, eight years old. People that believe in what they're doing to build some of the best trails in the world. They take a lot of pride in their work. Uh, this is the Calida connector. So there's Hall's Ranch down on this end, and then Chimney Rock out here. So this is just gonna connect those two. It's gonna make several big loops, but one big main loop. 
I'm excited by it. It's gonna blow people's minds, you know, to be able to plan in bigger days, packing two sandwiches. That is just the tip of the iceberg, what people have experienced right now. Chimneys is like near and dear to my heart. When you leave from town, you're gonna climb 5,000 feet, like in a hurry. And by the time you reach Chimney Rock, I mean, you're feeling it for sure. There's no way to get up here unless you're willing to grind. Right out of town, pretty steep, lots of hiking. It's a nightmare on a regular bike. A lot of the trails around here we don't shuttle to, and a lot of people aren't willing to put in the work to get to them. But on an e-bike, it makes it much more accessible. By riding on terrain that necessitates it, my opinion of e-bikes has been reversed. Chimney Rock itself is essentially ridge riding. It's above alpine, puts you in these big volcanic rock spires, and just a really exposed, gnarly piece of landscape. In 1993, we had mountain bike action come out here, and we took them on that trail off Chimney Rock, and they came down Empire, and the article was like, world's best downhill, uh, and it was Empire Creek. That trail is just as fast as you can go on really narrow single track. That's special. Chimney Rock and Craycroft on Empire. There's probably less than 50 mountain bikers that go out there in a year, and people come here and it's like, they do the same run, Downeyville downhill. But having access to an e-bike, I'm able to go farther, go to different places that I wasn't able to. My adventure bubble like used to be this big, like this is what I can do, and now it's like, it's this big. Got some pie, tater pie, moon pie, pie, pie.